so we today we are going to see about actually what the uh, usage of the static and non static and the local variable which you have seen yesterday along with that how the memory allocations are being allocated for it okay that is what we are going to see for today so i'll open So if I want to create a new project, I'll go to file, new project, that is Java project directly I can give. So now I need to select the environment as 1.7, I'll select it. Then I'll give my information as my second project. Then I'll click on finish. Then after that, I'll right click on the source folder, new package. So I'll just give the package name as first package. Click on finish. Then right click on the first package, new. Just in So I created the class over there. So I right click on the package and then I click on class. Now give the class name. So class name, I'll just give it as sample. Sample is my class name. I'll click on default. Click on the public static widement checkbox. Click on finish. So I created it. Then this one I don't need. So always a class will have start with the class and then my class name then it start with the parenthesis and close it then top we'll have a package and then what is my package name is the first package over here then i'll have my main function public static void main over here that is what i have here okay then so how a local variable will be declared integer i is equal to 10 then if i want to print that one sy so control space that will give me system order then if I press I now right click run as Java application that prints me 10 over here okay it printed me 10 then after that how I can declare a global variable global variables of two types I told you so one is static another one is non-static so integer a is equal to 25 integer b is equal to 50 
so if a variable starts with a keyword called static that is called as a static variable okay a static variable and then it does not have any keyword over there that will be called as a non static variable static variables can be accessed directly with the help of a class name okay the standard way of accessing the static members are always with the help of a class name sample is the class name dot when i give it will give me what are the members i can access so right now a is that information so i can access a then after that syso if i give only the variable name that is also possible for me to access the static variable so now when i right click run as java application see 10 25 25 two times 25 25 has been printed for this one if i want to access the non static variable so for that i need to give new sample now what will happen this will help me to create an object okay it's created me an object over there then i need to give an object name so obj1 equal to new sample one so i given the object name now i need to give a reference for that the class name will be the reference so when i give like this what will happen all the global members of the sample class will be loaded into this object what are the global members so all the static and non static members will be loaded so a and b will be loaded then my main function all will be loaded right now for me so now when i give this is all okay obj1 dot now if you see i can access the b variable and then also a variable and even my main function also is there along with that we can see some other can you see these b a all the thing can you see sample is coming that means what this b and a variable is coming from sample even the main function is coming from the sample other things are coming from object okay what are the thing is actually by default all the classes okay all the classes are been inherited to the object class what is inherited means object class will be the supermost class for all the classes in java so all the classes will have informations of the object class also okay when we create an object we can access the members of the object class also so now we'll access a so now i'll write this see i am able to access the static members through class name only variable name and also through object name next so so obj1 dot b non static members only i can access through object name alone right click and as java application see 15 so i am able to access the non static member through object name that's thing okay this is what we have seen yesterday so now i'm going to show you about how to how the objects are created that is actually entire memory location concept i'm going to help you out any doubts on understanding actually what static and non static anyone has so i'll go further so i will execute you this program we'll see
so we'll execute this one so always when a program executes okay what will happen a memory location will be created for it okay so it creates a memory location creates memory location then the memory location name will be global local variable then okay always when the memory location is created first it will create me a static pool okay it will create me one static pool so what will happen in the static pool means all the static members will be loaded okay this will be called as a static pool Okay, will be the static pool. So now all the static members will be loaded. What are the static members we have here? You see, static in k equal to forty. Then after that, my main function, my main function will be loaded. Okay, the only, only we have these static members. Now, next to what will happen, my main function start to execute first. Okay, so for that, a local memory for the main will be created. Local memory for main. For main is created. Now main function start to skip. Now what happened? I'm going to give integer i is equal to 10, integer j is equal to 20. Two local variables are created for me. Integer i is equal to 10, integer j is equal to 20. Okay. Two local variables for main function has been created. Now actually what my side execution starts. System dot open to local variable. Okay, so what's happening? It will print me local variable. Then i space j, what is i right now? It comes over to the main function. What is the i value right now? It is 10. So 10 will be printed. Then space, then to j, that is 20. Okay, i space 20 over there. Then after that global variable, k. So when I refer only through variable name, first it comes to the main function. Do we have k, um, k memory location over here? No. Now if it is not there directly it goes to the static pool. What is the k value right now? That is 40. So 40 will be printed. Global variable 40. Then after that, system dot print and global local variable dot k. So when you refer through help of a class name, okay, class name dot the variable name, global variable dot k, first directly it goes to the static pool. When you refer through variable name alone, control goes to the main function, then after that it goes to the static pool. When you directly refer to the class name, directly the search will go to the static pool and then prints me what is the key value right now, that is 40 over there for me. That's what, so it has been created. Then after that, now I'm going to create an object. So now what is the thing? New global local variable. It creates me an object over there. Okay, it creates me an object. It created me one object over there. So for this one, it creates me an object. Then after that, what is the object name right now? That is object OBJ. OBJ is object name. Then reference is what? Global local variable. That means what will happen? All the global members will be loaded. So it has been created from this one. 
the object is created from the memory so now all the global members what are the global members right now we have right now we have this static int k int p then also my main function okay so main is also a kind of a global member that also will be loaded and then even my class information okay class global local variable everything will be loaded for me right now here okay so everything will be loaded so all those things are loaded now now i'm going to give obj dot p it comes to the obj p value is what right now for me it's 50 so 50 will be printed then obj dot k obj dot k it is what 40 so 40 will be printed then after that obj dot p is equal to 60 so i'm going to give in the obj dot p the 50 value i'm going to change it to 60. that is 60. then obj dot k equal to 90. so obj dot k is equal to 90. so now what happened the k value which is 40 that will be changed to 90. Okay, that will be changed to 90 right now. When for the static numbers alone, when it's going to change the value over there, it changes over there in everywhere because what will happen right now, static numbers alone, it will take the copy of from the static pool to everywhere. Okay, all over the place it will have the same copy. So it will change the value in one place that changes in everywhere. Okay, now when you uh, print obj.p, what happened? What is the obj.p value right now? That is 60. So 60 will be printed for me. 60 will be printed. Then obj dot k. K value is what obj dot k that is 90. Then global local I'm printing global local any variable any information that is comes under double code that will be also printed now. So global local variable then space global local variable dot k that is referring through class and directly goes to the static pool what is the value that right now is there 90 90 will be printed clear now i'm creating an another object global local variable that is the object name is obj1 so i'll create an another object so this object is created from this main so what are the members will be loaded right now? Same thing, static in decay. So right now, what is the latest value right now? Static in decay is having, that is 90. Equal to 90. 90 will be loaded. Okay, then after that what? My non-static member. That remains same actually that latest value will not be taken only for the static members only latest value will be taken and then along with that and main and then this class local variable everything will be loaded for me here. Okay, all these things are loaded. Then again now I'm printing obj.p obj1.p. So what is the object name right now that is obj1 then obj1 dot p so p that is what right now in obj1 what is the p value right now that is 90 90 will be printed then obj1 dot k obj1 dot k hey, sorry obj1 dot p is what 50 so okay wrongly taken as that k value okay that is 50 over here then obj1 dot k that is 90 then after that global local variable global local variable space global local variable dot k that is in the static pool k value is what right now that is 19 will be printed that's what will be output uh, clear for everyone anyone has any doubts on understanding this how memory locations are happened and then how which memory and then how the call will go anyone has any doubts uh, Murli, if you can repeat from the third one, like the from the first object that you created. Sure. Uh, uh, from which one? Third line, huh? From where the or uh, you know where the key value gets changed. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, got it. Yeah, thank you. So.
So from this place onwards only the k value is being changed. Okay. So now I'll copy the same program. We'll execute from one more time. So you will have all will have a good clarity. So always when execution start, a memory will be created and then first actually what the first memory which will be allocated is called as a static pool. So what is the static pool will happen over here means all the static members will be loaded for me. So here what are the static members we have over here static in k equal to 40 that will be loaded. Then after that we have main main function we don't have apart from that any static members over there. So that will be loaded. So then after that once actually what min function first start to execute for that a local memory for that main has been created. Local memory for main. A local memory for the main has been created first. Then after that first what it creates two local variables int i is equal to 10 int j equal to 20. Okay, so I want you guys to explain me the program so that becomes clear for you also. Okay, so I want uh, Ashok, can you tell me what will be the output for this one? These two lines. A local variable. Yes. 10 space 20. Okay, so local variable first it be printed, and then when I refer through i, yeah. where the uh, it will locate where it goes and checks the for the i variable value. Main. Why? Main. Uh, it goes to main, but why yeah. it directly goes to the main memory and then checks it? Can you tell me? Because this comes inside main function. We have we have declared any or static or something said. Ah, right now we are executing the main function when I refer through only variable name the search will first goes to the local memory the local memory for main here it checks whether do we have i variable or not yes we have i variable that value is what 10 so that's what it will be printed 10 then after that j that is 20 correct then global local variable dot k now Oh, sorry, uh, the system dot printed global variable then plus k. Now, also, I'm referring only the variable name. Now, what will happen? We'll go and check in static. Uh, first, where the search will go? It will go to the main function. Correct, because I'm referring through the variable name alone. Search will first goes to the main function. Here, we don't have any k variable. Then after that it goes to the static pool that will be 40. Okay. Yeah. Thanks Ashok. Thank you. So then uh, Balaji, can you now tell me 
So what will happen next? Uh, the next one will be uh, the uh, it will be executing forty. It will be forty. Um, global, oh, global. Yeah. Now global local variable dot k. Now where the search will go? Uh, it will go to the uh, static uh, thing. Correct. Directly the search will go to the static pole because I am referring through class name. Class name. Yes, that's thing. So now can you tell me now this line what will happen? Okay, actually we are just uh, 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 creating an object actually. Correct. What is the object name? So, uh, the object name is uh, based on the class we are creating the object name actually. So uh -huh. we are declaring with uh, global local variable. Correct. The object name is obj. The OBJ. reference for that object is what? Global local variable. Yeah. So when you refer through this class, what will happen? Yeah. Now uh, if you are printing that. Uh, Object dot p. Then no, no, no. First, actually, what memories? What other things will be loaded? When you refer through this class, what will happen? Uh, it, it it will take the global variable. Correct. All the global members of that referred class. Okay, that is yes. local, local variable. So static in k equal to forty, in p equal to fifty. Then my main function will be. Yeah. Main function also will be. Yes. yes, correct. Then after that, for me. Next, even the class global local variable, those also global. So, all these things will be loaded right now for me here. Okay, then next, what will happen? Next step? Uh, it will be uh, object dot p. If you execute it, then uh, we will get the value of 50 actually. Correct. Goes to the obj object, then yes, yes. finds for the p variable that is 50. 50, yes. Then here. Here it will take uh, it's uh, forty actually. Correct. It will take forty. Yes, correct. So then, next. Uh, next, we are uh, uh, declaring two other uh, values. That is, uh, p is equal to sixty and k is equal to ninety. So that is, we are trying to change the uh, initial values. What you given in the global variable. Correct. So goes to the object, and then after that, for the p value. So the 50 will be replaced with 50 right now. Yes. Correct. Yeah. Then, uh, hey, thanks, uh, thanks, Balaji. Okay. So, uh, next, uh, Manish, can you tell me now what will happen for this one? OBJ dot k equal to 90. It will replace the k value 40. Right. So, OBJ dot k. So that will be replaced with. 90 right now. Yes. So now, which of the places actually put this 90 will be replaced? Can you tell me? Uh, in uh, object, it will be replaced static int. So, yes, correct. That is in the static pool level also because static members alone will have always only one copy. Okay, the same information which is there over there. Under okay. static pool, that only actually what will be taken and been shown in all the places. So okay. when we going to refer, okay, when mm -hmm. we are going to change the static member value, it will be changing mm -hmm. in all over the place. Okay, that's the thing. Okay, so now it changes ninety over here also. Mm -hmm. Yes. Then next, what will be the output for this one? Sorry. Now what will be the output for this one right now? We have changed the values. Uh, Yes. So it will be um, object dot p plus, sorry ninety. Correct. Ninety will be the output. Then obj dot k. Yeah, and uh, the k replaced by okay, that will be uh, sorry. Yeah. Hey, sorry, sorry, sorry. Obj dot p. p yeah, I think sixty ninety. Sorry, sorry, sixty ninety. Sorry, 60. with the value. Yeah, correct. Sixty. Then obj dot k. That will be. Ninety, yes. That will be so, ninety. Uh, yes. Would you like just to replace the value? We are using this command obj dot p, right? We are changing the value with with this command. Yes, correct. So okay. referring that is referring the variable with the help of that object name. Okay. okay. That's the thing. Okay. Then after that, system dot printer and global local variable dot k. Now what will be the output? 
global local variable uh, uh, and then 90 correct global local variable then after that when i refer to global local with a class name where the search will go uh, to this uh, object dot kla that is 90 no. yes when no, sorry sorry static static sorry yeah sorry sorry it directly goes to the static pool when i refer through class name that is 90 yes yes sorry yeah. that is 90 yeah then after that now i am going to create another object so now what happens so i am creating another object Yes. So this object is created from the main. This object is created from here. This is OBJ one. Okay. Then now, what are the members will be loaded right now? All the global members. So what are the global members? Yes. Static in main. So right now. Static member alone. What will happen? The latest value will be taken. What is the latest value right now? That is nine. Ninety. Ninety will be taken. Then for the non-static member, same. I will be. It will be. Yeah, the previous information only will be there for always. Then my main function. Why is that so? Yeah. Tell me. Why is that so? Ah, uh, because static members alone will have only one single copy. Okay, non-static members will have multiple copies. Okay, static members, whenever you are going to change the value, what will happen? It will be changing in all over the places. That's why when I'm going to take it over there, when I create another object, the latest value only will be taken. But non-static member, what will happen? This will be local for this object only. So that's why when I create another object. The previous value only will be taken. But this one, if you see, when you change it, it has been changed over there in the static pool also. Yes. But not the non-static member. Yes. Okay, that's the thing. So now all the members are loaded. Now what will be the output of OBJ one dot p right now? Sorry. Ah, uh, right now we created the object OBJ one. Correct. Yes. So it will be fifty only. Correct. So. Now obj one dot p so it prints me obj one dot p obj one dot p then after that here p value is not fifty then after that next obj one dot k ninety correct obj one dot k dot ninety obj one dot k Then after that, what k value is what ninety? Nine. Then after that, global local variable. Ninety. Yes. The, where the search will go for this one? Direct. The static int, the first class here. Yeah. Correct. Directly the search will go there. That's the thing. Yes. That's the thing. Clear? Clear for everyone? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay, so this is how execution happen. Now, I am going to give an assignment for you right now. So this is what we executed. Now, I want you guys to execute me this one. Okay, so for you, font size is clear. You know, if you want, I'll increase a little bit. Okay, I want you to do the same. Okay, I have drawn the diagram for this one now. Same like that, I want you to draw this one. Okay, so first static pool, then your main function, then your object creation. At that time, what will happen? The same thing right now. I want you guys to draw this one. Okay, same as like which I have drawn the memory location like that. You want? I want you to draw. Then after that, I want the output for this program. Okay, now I want this one. The same thing what I did. How I drawn the memory location? Same like the draw in a paper. Okay, then after that, just give me the output for this one. That's what I want everyone to do now. Clear? Clear for everyone? Anyone has any doubts? We just normally draw in the paper, right? Yeah, you can draw in the paper. That's it. Okay, you can draw in the paper. That's it. I want. Okay, then finally print me the output. Okay, so you we have to after you finish that one. Okay, then after that we'll compare. I'll execute this program. We'll see whether your output and the our executed output is matching or not. Clear? Okay. Clear? 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 Clear
okay guys okay so right now is 250 i'll give you 10 minutes of time three o'clock again we'll connect so then after that we'll see your output your executives properly or not that's the thing okay guys so i'll have this one everyone is clear now so anyone has any doubts on this no 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 doubts okay yes small thing i have actually yes balaji the previous uh, thing right uh, the previous what we saw right uh, yeah yeah in that uh, just a small thing here right uh, uh, in that uh, the last to third line right from last the third one uh, object one dot p right so we yeah. are uh, yeah, yeah 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 there we are uh, considering it as uh, uh, this one right p right yes cut cut so, so uh, the that alone I just missed actually uh, I couldn't get it. Uh, simple, simple. What is the thing means? Whenever you change a value for the static member, what will happen? That will be having only one copy. It will be changing in all over the places. Okay. okay. So that's what happened. When I give the value as here, obg.ke equal to 90, it changes the value over here and also in the static pool also. Okay. But non-static member, when you change it to 60, that will be local for this object only. That's why when I created the another object, for me, A value was taken as 90, B value still remains as actually what the 50 only which is there. Not the okay. latest value. Okay, thank you. got it. Yeah. Ah, that's the only thing. Okay, guys? Okay. So now execute this program. Okay, by 3 o'clock we'll see. And then finally after execution, we'll see whether your output and then the executor output is correct. Okay, thank you.
I guess. Uh, anyone has got the output? Anyone has got the output? So we'll see how the execution happens and then after that, what is the output of the same program? So what is the output for this one? We'll see. So it creates me one memory location. Then always what will happen? It will have a static pool. The memory location name is global local two. It is static pool. So then what are the static members we have over here? Static int i is equal to 10. Then after that, we have our main function. Only we have these two static members. That's the thing. Then after that, for me, a local memory for main will be created for me right now. Local memory for main. Local memory for main is created. Then now main start to execute right now. So system dot print i. What is the i value first? It checks over here in the main function. Do we have i? No, we don't have any i variable. Then comes over here to the static pool. What is the i value right now? That is 10. 10 will be printed for me here. Okay, 10 will be the output. Then i is equal to 20. Comes over here. What is the i value? There is no i variable here. Comes over to static pool. What is the i value? That is 20. 20 has been printed. Then next prints me i. So comes to main function. We don't have any i. Comes to the static pool. The i value is 20. Then now integer i is equal to 50. Now what will happen right now for me? In the main memory, for me, a variable will be created. Integer i is equal to 15 right now. Then what is the i value right now? Comes to the main function. Here we have i right now. What is the i value right now? That is 50. 50 will be printed. That's the thing. Okay, then i is equal to i plus 20. So what is i right now? For me here it's 50. 50 plus 20 is what? 70. 70 will be stored over there where? In the local i. So now 70 will be stored over here in the local i here. Seventy will be stored over here. Then I'm printing i. What is the i value right now? Comes to the local memory of main. Prints me i. That is seventy. Okay. Then after that, what? Global local two dot i plus twenty. Global local two dot i. Global local two dot i means comes to the static pool. What is the i value? That is twenty. Twenty plus twenty is what? Forty. Now forty will be assigned to where? Local i. So now this will be forty. It will be forty right now. Okay, then after that right now what? I am printing i. What is the i value right now for, oh, sorry. Uh, I am printing the i value. What is the i value right now? That is 40. 40 will be printed. Forty is printed right now here. Then global local 2.i. Global local 2.i means comes here to the static pool that is 20. Okay, so 20 is printed now global local 2.i plus 25 
So global local 2.i is what? 20, 20 plus 25 is 45. 45 will be stored over there under global local 2.i. So 45 will be stored. Forty five. Okay. Then global local two dot i plus twenty five. Forty five plus twenty five that will be seventy. Seventy will be stored under local i. Seventy. Okay. Then after that system dot dot print then i. What is the i value right now for me? I value is seventy. So seventy will be printed. 70 will be printed then global local 2.i that is what static pool level what is the i value that is 45 45 will be printed clear everyone has got the same output or now you're clear about it clear for everyone guys uh, uh, i just have a quick doubt yes uh, i don't know if i have missed something or something uh here you have replaced the static i 10 by 20 the first step you replace it right yeah. uh, but uh, you know this is uh, this is a static i and that is a, like the global variable right then like how did we replace this the first 10 by 20 uh, first actually what when you start to execute main function start to execute correct mm -hmm. now for the first three lines we don't have any local variable here right yes so when you refer with i what will happen comes over here so here right now in the main function we don't have any i variable before correct so goes to the static pool 10 yeah, yeah. printed here correct yes yes then i'm giving i is equal to 20 and i give i is equal to 20 comes to the main now we mm -hmm. don't have any i variable yet. Mm -hmm. then after that comes to the static pool then changes from 10 to 20 here because no, no, that I put it. Uh, I I just have one understanding. Maybe I'm not. Uh, con I'm confused here. Uh, last time we changed the value stating object dot some, Correct. right? Correct. Uh, object. Uh, yeah. Now we are giving it. Uh, you know, normal i dot twenty. So either ways you can change the global variable. Uh, that is, if I create an object in the object level also, for example, then information will be loaded, static and non-static. Okay. Yes. So I can refer the static members. To help of mm -hmm. a class name, mm -hmm. to help of only the variable name, mm -hmm. and also through help of the object name, correct? Okay, okay. If I refer through variable name, okay, always what will happen goes to the local function of that local mm -hmm. memory. Checks whether we have the same variable. If we don't have the same variable, then only it goes to the static pool. Okay. Okay. In case after creating the static sorry local member after that when i refer to variable name always it goes to the main memory only okay. so this point of time only only when i refer to the help of the class name then only it's going to the stack okay that's the difference okay, okay everyone okay guys so this is about this this is actually what local and then global members over there how it can be used so now, so this basic one, okay, uh, here, the final one, it's very simple, nothing is there. I'll execute this one, so finally for you. Now we we'll execute this one. So it 
creates a local memory for this one. Global local point. Then it will have a static pool. So all the static members will be loaded. These two. Then after that, my main function. Everything will be loaded. Then after that, int g is equal to 30. So what will happen right now? First, actually, what a local memory for main will be created. Local memory for main will be created. Write the formula first. Then int j is equal to 30. So first check one. It's int j is equal to 30. Then first it's printing me j value. So may refer only with the variable name. First it goes to the main function. Here, do we have J value? Yes, we have J value. 30 will be printed for me here. 30. Then global local 1.i. Global local 1.i means actually what comes to the static pool. What is the I value right now? That is 10. 10 will be printed. Global local 1.d comes here. D value is 20.50. Then when I refer only with I variable name, comes to the main memory, here we don't have i variable comes to the static pool and then brings me 10. Same thing for d comes to the main memory, we don't have anything and then comes to the static pool and then brings me 20.50. That's it. Okay. This is how execution will happen over there. The only intention what I want to say over there means when it's a variable name, always goes to the local memory, then finally only it goes to the main memory over here. That's what I want to say over here. Clear for everyone? So anyone has any doubts on this? Okay. No more link, no. Okay, guys. So now we'll go and see about functions right now. Okay. So what is the usage of functions? First, we'll see that. So I'll come over here. So what is functions over here? For example, create functions usage. So I'm having some set of statements I want to execute. For example, this is all. Yeah. This is all. B. This is all. Hello. This is all. 
वेलकम How are you? This is all. Born to win. This is all. Good day. Disturber. So like that. If you see, there are some set of statements which has been repeated in the program a number of times. Okay, that A and B which has been repeated a number of times in my program. So these places actually from my side, if you see, I want to execute actually what instead of actually uh, think over instead of if it is two lines instead of that if it is two hundred lines of code. Okay, where in my Total program, totally in ten places. I want to use that two hundred lines of code means. So if I want to write it, it's actually totally two thousand lines of code. Instead of that, what I can do from my side, I can make it actually instead of having it as actually what two hundred lines of code in separate separate places. I can add that information as a function. So how, for example, I'll create another one. So I'll rename this one as message. On the scope, I'll create another class. So I'll copy paste everything. That's it. So now these two lines of code only I'm going to. Have it in all the places. So what I will do, I'll have it as a function. How to create a function? Means? So we'll have void method one. Void method one. I'll have. Okay. So here, those two lines of code I'll have it over here. Okay. I'll have it as a. There are two types of member method. One is static. Another one is non-static. As like we have for the variable. So to call this. Static methods. I can refer with the help of the method name. Otherwise, class name dot method name. Otherwise, with the object name dot method name. Static members. Not static members. As usual, object name only. So, which are the places I am having this A B? I am going to give it as function use method usage dot. Okay, then method one. Okay. I'm going to replace with that one. Which are the places we have A and B? I'm going to change it to this way. So now, obviously, if you see over there, think over if it is instead of actually two lines, two hundred lines of code of is there written over here means totally thousand interpreted lines of code. I'm reducing in my entire program. So make sure, I'm making sure that actually what my performance is very good over there this point of time, because if you have more lines of code in the program, your performance obviously will be decreased over there. Okay, that's a problem over here. So I'm trying to make sure that actually what the performance level is always good over there. That's the advantage of using this one. Clear for everyone? Uh, so mostly like a static void method that you have defined. Yes, it is a yes. it is one of the functions that we use to to move the you know the you know to make it simpler. Yes, in a simple, yeah, and that is this is the static method of defining it. Can you show me one example with the non-static method, please? Yeah, yeah, I'll show both. I'll show both. First, I'll execute this one. Then okay. I'll tell you a little bit about function. Then I'll come up to the non-static method also. Okay. 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 And then after the next week, we'll see about how the memory allocations has been happened for the functions, and then entire execution on that one also we'll see. Okay, so now methods. So what will happen right now? It has void method one. So what is this void over there means? Okay, it's a return type. Okay, so always the functions will have a keyword here called return. Okay, void means it's not mandatory for me to use it as return over there because void cannot return a value. Okay, so 
what is the method one means it's a method name it's a static method so now when I execute this program what will happen right click run as java application now what happens right now the memory location for the class has been done then after that it loads all the static members what are the static members we have method one and then my main function these two things are loaded first main function start to execute now first what will happen the first step function usage to dot method one what will happen goes to the static pool checks whether we have method one yes we have method one then it start to execute this one comes over here prints me a and b okay then after that return so now control comes over here then prints me hello then function usage to dot method one now again comes over here a and b will be printed then again what will happen return control comes over here now welcome then how are you then function usage but dot method one again control comes over here prints me a and b returns me over here then again born to win then again a and b then good day a and b best ever and a and b and then so like that each and every time what happen it comes to the method execute me those statements and then again control comes over here to the place wherever it is caught okay that's how a function will be executed clear so now instead of void if you have uh, anyone has any doubts on this one understanding how a function is executed clear for everyone now instead of void if i have it as integer so if i have it as integer see now return now it's throwing me an error over here so if i don't have a return statement before see before i have void if i don't have a return statement then also it will not be throwing giving me an error why because it's not mandatory for me to have the return statement over there for me if it is void okay because it's a known thing that actually it's not going to return me any value so for me it's not mandatory for me to return it over here okay so now instead of void if i have it as integer so now i need to return an integer value clear if it is boolean so now i need to return true or false if it is double i need to return a double value clear if it is a string i need to return a string value okay whatever is there return type based on that i need to return the value okay this is what return type so it's returning value wherever it is it's captured means it comes over here see now okay so the first statement actually uh, so the last statement okay here i'll give it as i'll print like this see now the output will be same extra this line will come now here i have allow this one i'm calling this one now it's returning me hello over here so that one comes over to this place so now i'll do system dot out dot printer so see now the returned value hello will be captured over here now it's executes me a and b and then returns me hello that hello will be coming over here then after that it prints me that information hello if you want i can capture it in a variable also function usage dot okay so here string y is equal to function usage to dot method one okay now if i, I can also print as is o method return value is plus el now i'll return it see method return value is hello this is how i can use it okay this is called as return type clear for everyone anyone has any doubts on this understood actually what is actually functions and then what is return value
Now, I'll have one more program. Yes. So the same thing in case, okay, I'm going to have it as actually what non-static method. It's of static, I'm making this non-static method over here. So right now I'll make it as void only. So I don't want to return any value. Now, if it is a non-static method, what I need to do, so from my side, I cannot directly call like this, see? Function, right now it's not throwing error because actually what it's pointing to, the to, this class. That's why it's not pointing error. See, it's throwing me error right now here, okay? So if I want to access the this method one, which is a non-static method, I need to create an object over there, okay? So for that, new, function usage three. Okay, then after that I can just give it three obj one is equal to. So here everywhere I need to make it as actually what obj one. That's our only change. Okay, now if we run it, execution will be same. Clear for everyone, anyone has any doubts? The only thing is actually what I made it as an object, created an object. Then I'm referring through help of the object name. Instead of class name, I'm referring through object name for the non-static method. That's the only thing. Any doubts for anyone? So, uh, really a small thing actually. Yes, Balaji. This uh, method one, right? Uh, that what you have entered method one with uh, brackets, right? So that is something like uh, every time we are using the same kind of thing or? Uh, uh, methods will be written actually what? Followed with parentheses, it can be anything. Instead of actually what I can also have A B C. So now what will happen? Everywhere it should be A B C. That's the only thing. But parenthesis is compulsory, mandatory. Because then only it knows that actually it's a method. Okay. And same thing, return type also is mandatory for me. Okay, otherwise it throws me never. So always your method type will be. Uh, started with actually what return type and then the method name. Clear, Manaji? Yeah, yeah. Okay, guys. So this is about functions. Okay. So next week I'm going to tell you about actually what. Um, right now I told you about return type. So still we have method overloading and then after that how the memories are being allocated for the functions or all those steps. So then you will be clear about actually what about functions, which is one of the very important concepts in Java. Okay. So still now for today, if anyone has any doubts, you can let me know. So otherwise, we'll start from the next week. So uh, these kind of functions, right? So uh, yes. like uh, this could be like uh, we'll be using uh, uh, in a larger scale during Selenium. Yes, functions are very much important in Selenium. So, in the like the functions only, what all our test cases will be written. Okay, okay, okay. So we will be calling the test cases. Then that will execute me some set of statements over there. That's how execution will be. Okay, so so really like see for example uh, earlier like for this main right uh, you told us uh, control space enter like uh, some sh uh, some shortcuts you told right. The same way for function, do we have anything? Maybe I don't know, but I'm asking you. Uh, no. Function level, we don't have any shortcuts, so we have to write the return type because uh, why means actually we don't have shortcuts here means functions is of actually different return types. Okay, it might be void and then it may be actually what uh, from my side it may be integer or boolean any type of return type. Method names also will be different, so that's why actually there is no shortcuts. Okay. Okay. So I'll forward these programs and then the recordings to you. Okay, so again, I'll give you some assignments for you guys. So that oh, only before this, Ashok, I have a small doubt. Yeah, yeah, yes, Ashok. Uh, only the object which you created that is uh, 
uh, that scope is within say within the main function or it will be applicable outside the function also uh super good question so object which i have created over there is local for this object only sorry this function only so i have not ex explained you about the garbage collector which i will be explaining you so what will happen right now for me when this main function executes for me so what will happen right now for me when it comes out of the main function it deletes the main memory when it deletes the main memory the objects which are all created from the main memory also will be deleted okay then when it comes out to the entire class static pool and then the entire memory also will be deleted by whom means it will be deleted by the garbage collector okay so whenever you create an object that object is local for that function alone same thing if i'm going to create an object for this function that object will be local for this object alone this uh, method alone clear always okay. objects are local for that functions alone okay okay so i'll give you some assignments for you guys so will help you in understanding it so these three things you will be writing it so i'll i'm trying to give you actually what a uh, as much as assignments okay don't think that actually what i'm giving more over there why i'm giving you assignments to tell to you because when i given assignment then only you guys will be understanding actually what uh, what we have learned in the class okay when you're doing it over there because i have explained to you you will be clear that actually what what i have explained to you but the same thing when you try to do the same program that time only you will clearly know that actually what you have understood it perfectly and then you are able to do that okay if you are able to do that then only it's like actually what what you understand is actually what is worth for you okay that's why i'm giving you assignments okay try to do it so it makes you help more there so actually in that one assignment you will not be understanding it which is method overloading okay so that one actually what i'll be uh, telling you on the next thing okay so okay this one Okay, guys. So I'll forward the assignments to you. So I'll do some changes over there. It's having method overloading concept also. So I'll change and then forward to you that one. Okay. Okay, guys. So next week we'll again start over there. I'll stop.